enemy lines and for that I'm going to bring in Tyler Horka a Mississippi State beat writer for the Clarion Ledger and USA Today and Tyler what did you think about that performance against LSU? Yeah going into it it was kind of the same feelings Mississippi State fans have had for as long as they've been playing LSU at least the last 30 years they've won in Baton Rouge twice in the last 30 years so going in I don't think there were a lot of expectations but then as the game started going and it was three to zero after the first quarter, which isn't really a Mike Leach uh, type of quarter, you know, but then at halftime they had the lead and, and through the third quarter and they were kind of sharing the lead. I think there were eight lead changes. So just the fact that they were playing back and forth with LSU, I think a lot of people were like, okay, yeah, uh, Mike Leach is here and he's given us a chance to win. And then, by the end of it, they set the passing record in the SEC with 623 yards. And the defense played a lot better than uh, a lot of people thought they would with seven sacks and a couple interceptions. So all in all, I don't think Mississippi State fans could have asked for a better debut for Mike Leach. Now, the Bulldogs quarterback K.J. Costello set an SEC record in his first SEC game, a transfer from Stanford. What have you heard about his decision to transfer to Mississippi State and how things have gone for him so far in Starkville? Yeah, talking to him last night, um, we've kind of went back and, and asked him what this last year has been like for him because he was pretty banged up with injuries at Stanford last year, and he actually only started five games. The last game that he started was in November, so we're coming up on the one-year anniversary of that, and he said through November, December, even close to when he signed on with Mississippi State in February, he couldn't even really throw a football, could hardly hold a football because of his thumb. And he was just like, I, don't, I have no idea what this 2020 football season is going to look for me, look like for me. And it, it turns out uh, pretty good. Um, that's why he ended up at Mississippi State, the injury. And he was also a graduate. So he had the flexibility of really going anywhere he wanted to and making uh, the most of his last year of college football eligibility. Why not team up with Mike Leach at a new place where Leach is trying to implement uh, the air raid in the SEC? So far, so good. And, yeah, I don't, I don't think a lot of people expected KJ to throw for that many yards in any game, let alone the first game. But um, it just goes to show what an experienced guy can do in Mike Leach's offense because at Stanford, he started 25 games, threw for over 6,000 yards in his three years there. Um, he's over 50 touchdowns in his career now, too. So this is a guy that's been around the block in college football. Mike Leach has obviously been around the block in college football. So the two of them together is what led to what you saw at LSU. Costello has a lot of weapons to work with. What are some of the names that we should be watching out for in this game? Yeah, it, it's, it was pretty shocking to see a guy like Osiris Mitchell, a wide receiver who led the team last year with, I think, 430 yards. He definitely didn't get 500 yards in the whole year. Go for 183 against LSU. Javante Payton is also a senior. Mitchell is a senior as well. And he went for over 100. Kylan Hill went for 158 yards receiving out of the backfield, scored on a 75-yard touchdown catch. He only had seven carries. This is a guy that's used to carrying the ball 20 to 25 times, you know, traditionally, just like you do in the SEC, but that's no more. He's going to be getting the ball 20 times. I guess he um, he had, what, 15 touches in this last game and uh, close to 200 yards from scrimmage. So Mike Leach's offense is really efficient. It doesn't matter who he's getting the ball to, and he's going to get the ball to a lot of guys. I think 10 players caught passes in this last game. One of them was an offensive lineman, which the ball was batted at, down at the line, and, and he, he caught the ball. So – Expect a lot of people to get the ball, but those three names, Mitchell, Peyton, and Hill, are, are going to kind of lead the way. Well, everyone is talking about Mississippi State's offense, but what about the defense? What are their strengths? Yeah, everybody thought it was going to be um, the front six, if you will, because Mississippi State runs a 3-3-5 base defense, so three defensive linemen, three linebackers. Errol Thompson has been in – it seems like this is his 10th year playing college football. He, he's always there in the middle of the field. He's the – the leader of the defense at linebacker, but you got a couple of other veteran guys up front and Kobe Jones and Marquis Spencer who are really good at getting to the quarterback. Like I said, Mississippi State had seven sacks that led the, the way in the SEC. So the strength is definitely up front, but uh, if you ask some of those guys who got those sacks, they said a lot of them were covered sacks and Mississippi State has a pretty inexperienced secondary. I think among them, 
there were 10 starts. The, the amount of starts did not make up a full season among the five guys playing in the secondary, which is pretty crazy. They still locked down some really talented LSU wide receivers and led their um, defensive line was able to get to the quarterback that way. So all in all, it was a pretty um, well-rounded display of defense from Mississippi State last week. And, and like I said, it was just a total team effort all the way around. And lastly, I've got to get your take on this game against Arkansas. How do you think this one shakes out? Well, yeah, I guess Mississippi State is trying to score 50 points on Arkansas for the third year in a row, which is kind of crazy. Joe Moore had lost his job because his offense couldn't score. And here Mississippi State is, uh, you know, trying to go for 50 points for the third straight year. If Joe Moorhead could do it, I think a lot of fans around here probably think Mike Leach can, but you have to take into account that Arkansas is also under different leadership. I think they're a better coach football team, all things considered, under Sam Pittman. So um, I, I don't expect Mississippi State to score 50 points again, but it wouldn't shock me if uh, it's a high-scoring game. I know Arkansas has some things to, to figure out on the offensive side of the ball, but uh, new leadership on both sides. Uh, I think both fan bases have a lot to look forward to beyond this game. You know, this is just the second game for both of these head coaches at their respective schools. So uh, whatever happens in this game, I, I don't think it's, you know, you need to hang your hat on that. And that's what these two programs are going to look forward are going to look like going forward under Leach and Pittman. But um, yeah, it's, it, it's going to be a fun one. Um, it's SEC college football. It's fun every week. Tyler Horka with the Clarion Ledger and USA Today. Thank you so much for all of your insight and for taking us behind enemy lines.